Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my updated recipe for this Guyanese style plat bread. For anybody who doesn't know what plat bread is, it is basically just a very soft and fluffy type of bread that is braided into the shape that you see here. This one is super fluffy, super delicious, and super soft. So make sure you ditch that bakery stuff and go ahead and make it at home. The first thing that we're gonna do is bloom our yeast. And the reason why we have to bloom the yeast is so this way we can activate it and make sure that our yeast is actually working. So in a large cup or a bowl, I'm going in with some warm milk. If you did not want to use milk, you can also use water. And on top of that milk, I'm going to be going in with my dried active yeast. And I'm also going to be going on with a few tablespoons of sugar. The reason why you add sugar when blooming your yeast is so this way the yeast has something to feed on and it'll start to puff up really nicely. I'm just going to give this a mix and I'm going to allow it to sit covered for about 10 to 15 minutes or until I see it start to bubble up and it will almost double in size. So while we have the yeast mixture blooming or puffing up just a little bit, it is time to start on the bread dough. So in my stand mixer, or you can do this by hand in a regular bowl, you're gonna go in with some all-purpose flour. And into the all-purpose flour, we're also gonna go in with a little bit of salt. And I'm also gonna be going in with some melted butter. Now I'm using unsalted butter, but if all you had was salted butter, you can use that and then omit the salt that we had added in earlier. And once you get all of those ingredients in your stand mixer or in your bowl, you're just gonna start to mix everything together very well. And once your flour, the butter, and the salt are mixed well together, it is time to go in with that yeast mixture. So as you guys can see, the mixture has gotten nice and puffy. It has grown in size. And this is exactly how you know that your yeast mixture is working and you had really good yeast. So at this point, you're gonna add it into the flour mixture. I wanted to let you know that the amount of liquid that we use to bloom the yeast is not enough to bring in the dough together. So what you're gonna need to do is once it gets mixed together, you're gonna have to go in with a little bit of extra warm water or warm milk or liquid of your choice. So this way you can bring it together into a soft and sticky dough. Whenever you're making any type of bread, you want to make sure that you add in enough liquid because if you do not add in enough liquid and you make it too dense or make the dough too hard, then the actual bread will come out hard and dry in the end. So this is what the mixture looks like after I've gotten enough liquid mixed in. As you guys can see, it's nice and it's sticky and it's very messy on my hands. But all we're going to do now is leave it in the stand mixer and we're going to knead it for about 8 to 10 minutes or until this mixture is nice and smooth and stretchy. You wanna make sure you form the glutens very well because that's gonna make for a very tender and soft bread. And after about eight to 10 minutes of kneading in the stand mixer, you guys are gonna see that it's nice and smooth. It is kneaded very well and it's nice and stretchy. This is exactly what you want. It is also no longer sticking to your hands. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna fold this up into a ball. We're gonna put this in a bowl and we're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and then we're going to let this sit in a warm place for about an hour to two hours or until the bread dough doubles in size. This is what my plat bread dough looks like after rising for about an hour. As you guys can see, it has definitely grown in size. It is nice and fluffy and we are ready to make our plat bread. So all I'm gonna do is take the dough out of the bowl and divide it into three pieces. You wanna make sure that it is as even as possible so this way each braid or plat in the bread is nice and even. And once you get three even sized balls, it is time to go ahead and roll them into logs. Now, the thinner that you roll the logs, the bigger your bread will be. I like to make them more on the thicker side just because I like a very thick plat bread. But go ahead and roll out all three of the balls into logs like I'm doing here. Now, once you get all three of your dough balls rolled out into logs, it is time for you to start platting the bread. So you want to gather the three ends and just pinch them together so you have one end to work with. And then you're going to braid it just as if you were braiding here. So you're going to put one over the other, then continue that process until you have it properly braided. Go ahead and follow the method that you see in my video here. And remember, as you are plaiting this bread or braiding this bread, you need to make sure that it is tight as possible, because if it is not tight, then it will actually open up or burst in the oven, and that is not what you want. Now, all I'm going to do is place this on a baking sheet that I've lined with some parchment paper. Now, if you didn't want to use parchment paper, you could also just butter the pan and that works well too. And I'm going to put a tea towel over this and just cover it and let it rest for about another hour or until it doubles in size again. The reason why we need to do this is so this way it builds up some air bubbles on the inside and it's gonna help make the bread nice and fluffy in the oven as well. So this is what the bread dough looks like after about an hour of raising for the second time. I'm just gonna go ahead at this point and pop it in my oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna leave it there for 20 to 25 minutes or until the bread is golden brown all over and it is nice and fluffy. And after exactly 20 to 25 minutes, you're gonna see that your bread gets the desired color that you want. 
it has puffed up in size even more and you're gonna pull it out of the oven. And as soon as you get it out of the oven, it is time to brush it with some butter. Now you need to lather the top of this baby up a lot because you want it to stay nice and soft on the top. If you do not do this step, what happens is the bread tends to get crispy on the top and it never really gets back soft again. And before you cut into this bread, you need to make sure that it cools for at least 15 to 20 minutes. The reason being is because if you cut into very, very hot bread, it tends to fall in the middle and it will get a very gummy texture. So my plat bread's actually been cooling for about 30 minutes at this point. It's still a little bit warm to the touch, but it is ready to be cut into. I'm gonna cut some thick slices and start serving it with some butter and some cheese, exactly what this beautiful bread should be served with alongside a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. As you guys can see, when I cut into this bread, it is super fluffy, it is nice and soft, it has the perfect color all over the outside, and guys, this one is such a winner. Definitely give my recipe a try, you will not be disappointed. In my opinion, this is the best plat bread recipe on the internet. So to everyone who watched my video today, a big thank you goes to you. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet and go ahead and drop those comments down below. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye everyone.